Hey, good morning, Finbar. Good morning, Wyatt. Good morning, Chen. Happy Wednesday. Hey, good morning, Jenna. Good morning, Foreign Wanderer. Hash Brown Swag. Good morning, Russ. Krista says, congrats on Teaching Innovation Award. Hey, thank you, Krista. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Chen is preparing, <laughs> preparing my coffee. Get it ready. That should, that should be ready already. The coffee should be ready to, to go. Jenna says, congrats, Dr. E. Thank you, Jenna. I appreciate it very much. It is a privilege and a joy to be able to teach and interact with you guys on a daily basis. I enjoy it a lot. Mm -hmm, let's see. Put up the article about your reward. Let's see. Let's see if I can find this thing. Okay. Is that how the class would be if in person? Let's see. Oh yeah, it's this one, teaching innovation. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh yeah. So we have, if we were in person, yeah, we'd have some, we have a motion simulator on campus. Well, I, I didn't develop the motion simulator uh, Kevin Hume, he's this, um, I don't know if you guys know him, but he's this staff, uh, he's, he's a research associate on campus, and he did, he developed this motion simulator, and then he's nice enough to let us use it with the road vehicle dynamics class. Um, wait, maybe I can show you real quick. Yeah, but I, I, I wish we could use that motion simulator. It's so fun. Oh yeah, I can show you this. Well, okay, these are from the game we made. But where's the motion simulator itself? Oh yeah, it looks, this is an older picture, but this is on the first floor of Furnace. Uh, we have this car that's sitting on a motion platform. You can kind of see the motion platform back in there but it has this 360 screen that goes around you. And then like you get to see all of this stuff. And so we made some games. I wish you guys could play them. Oh, you took a bunch of tours there when you worked for the Dean's office. It's super cool. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. But yeah, we, We took all the students in there and then um, we made GG diagrams for the races that they did. We did this, like, yeah, that track from the homework. We have, <laughs> we usually have everybody ride on it yourself. <coughs> Stupid COVID. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we, we better get started here because there's a lot of cool stuff that I want to do today. There's no handout today. I gotta plug this guy in. Because most of what we're gonna be doing is in MATLAB, but I'll make a couple notes here. Oh, we gotta update this title. It is the 28th of October. It is Wednesday, and we are doing vehicle simulation. Okay, everybody, what you need to do, you need to open up MATLAB. All right. Vehicle simulation demo. And at the end, we're going to make an animation. at like a generic passenger car today so let's let's specify some vehicle parameters and then we'll go from there we'll build a model for this car so let's say it weighs 1500 kilograms it has a moment of inertia about its Z axis, which goes into the pavement. Kilograms times meters squared, 2873. Let's say it has a wheelbase of 2.68. I gotta turn the music down a little bit. 2.68 meters. So the wheelbase is the distance from the front axle to the rear axle. And let's say 60% of the weight is toward the, or 59% is toward the front of the car. So this is the front weight ratio. So this means the distance from the CG to the rear axle, so that's LR, it's gonna be this front weight times the wheelbase. So this is distance from CG to rear axle. Oh wait, why did I make this weight front percentage variable if I'm not going to use it? Okay, and then the distance from the CG to the front axle, it's gonna be the wheelbase minus that other distance we calculated because that has to add up to the wheelbase. So we're defining some geometry so far. Okay, let's talk about the tires. So the tire data we need to specify is the cornering stiffness. So let's say this is in newtons per radian. This is the combined cornering stiffness of front tires. And let's say that the cornering stiffness of the rear tires is just the, the same. of the rear tires. Okay. Okay, so we have these vehicle parameters. And for this simulation today, 
let's say we're going 40 miles per hour. And what I want to do is we're going to be going 40 miles per hour. And I want to introduce this like sinusoidal steering pattern. So you turn left, right, left, right. And I want to see how that looks. We're going to convert this into meters per second, though. So we got to multiply that by 0 0.44704. And we're going to assume this is this is a constant velocity. All right. Let's keep moving along here. All right, so now we're gonna get into the, the actual model. These, this is kind of like the, the parameters. For the bicycle model, we defined six parameters that are related to the handling characteristics of the car. So I'm just writing out all of these variables right now. And then we'll use the variables up above to define these parameters. And off the top of my head, I <coughs> I can't even remember what, what these are called. They, they have... Um, but you can look them up in our notes. Each of them has a specific name. I think this is the, like in Delta is the control moment derivative. It describes if you provide some steering at the front tire, how powerful is that at actually rotating your vehicle? So this is related, uh, this is like the control force derivative. And all of these have names. I just, I can't remember what they are but they're related to the stuff we defined up above. So Y beta is the negative of the sum of the combined front and rear cornering stiffnesses. So this is related to your tires. If you have bigger, grippier tires, Y beta is gonna be a bigger number. All right, Y R, this is one over your velocity so the bigger your velocity is, the smaller this number will get because you're dividing by velocity. It's CR times LR minus C F times LF. I'm gonna have to check this really quick because I just realized <laughs> I was checking in my, my notes and I, I wrote this as CF times LR, but that can't be right. I think this is CF times LF. Okay, let's keep moving on here. Y delta, that's CF. In beta, CR times LR minus CF times LF. Okay, we're almost done here. We just have to define all of these. CF times LF squared plus CR times LR squared. All right, last one, CF times LR. Whew. Okay, so these are all of the building blocks to make a model for a vehicle to create a bird's eye perspective of how it moves when you provide steering inputs. Now, we put this in a state space form. Let me see if I can pull this up.
Muscle mode. Da, 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 da. Ah, here it is. So you see all the terms in here. This we build our A matrix, we build our B matrix. Uh, S laughter, haha says just checking. Are those parentheses in line 18 and 21 in the right spot? The order of division then multiplication gets confusing. Let's check. So lines 18 and lines 21. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like I wanted to I wanted to divide this by velocity. So if I'm multiplying this by one over V out in front, is that gonna cause a problem? The answer is I don't think so, but I think it is better to do this. I think that's good practice that you just pointed out. Because the order of multiplication can get weird in certain situations. Wait, while I'm here, we might as well check the definitions of these. I'm looking at the code. Minus C F L F C R L R. C R L R minus C F L F. Okay, I, I think these are right. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to build this matrix right here. Okay, so we're gonna call that two by two matrix the A matrix. Okay, so Y beta divided by M times V, that's the top left element. Y R divided by M times V minus one. And then we need to go to the second row and if you put this dot, 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 it allows you to go to the next line and continue working on this. So I like to do this so that uh, my matrix, each row is like a row of the matrix. So N beta divided by that moment of inertia. N R divided by this moment of inertia. Okay, that's our A matrix. The B matrix is y delta divided by m times v and then we'll go to the next row n delta divided by i z okay so we have the makings of our states based model this is like consolidating all of the vehicle stuff that we developed in the first 22 lines of the code. Okay, now how do we use this to actually simulate the motion of the vehicle? Let's go back to the notes really quick. We'll try to break this down. Okay, so we have a state space model given this state space model. And it's, it's organized like this. So this is the time derivative of our side slip angle on the top, the time derivative of our yaw rate on the bottom. This is equal to our A matrix, two by two, that we just defined, times the side slip angle and the yaw rate itself, plus our 
B matrix times the steer angle at the front tire. All right, so this is a um, first order matrix like differential equation. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Sorry, just consulting with my cheat sheet really quick. Here's, here's our goal for today. We want to simulate how the following quantities change with time. Given um, a constant velocity v and some steering input over time delta. So the, the constant velocity is one of the assumptions we made to generate this linear bicycle model. So we're just assuming, okay, we're going 40 miles per hour. And now all I'm going to do is change the, the steering and maintain that constant speed. <clears throat> so we want to simulate the following qu quantities. So from this state space model up above, we're going to get the side slip angle as a function of time we're going to get the yaw rate as a function of time. And these are the primary quantities you get from the state space model. Now, so let's say like one and two, but then I want to use these to give us three more quantities. I want to get the heading angle as a function of time. So that's just where the car is pointed relative to where it started. So that's the third. And then I want to get the X position and the Y position as a function of time. So think of these as like the GPS coordinates. And then I want to make an animation where we're going to see the car moving as a function of time, changing position. I want to see where it's pointed as well. And um, how do we put all of this together? That's the question. That is the question. Okay, so the technique that I want to use is Euler forward integration. This is like the most basic integration technique. We've used it before. And this is how it works. We're going to use it on this state space model up above. So this is what the Euler forward technique will tell us. Given some side slip angle at some time, let's call that time T naught. And I'm going to say that the side slip angle is going to start at zero. Um, but if I want to predict, given a steering input, what that side slip angle will be a small time in the future from now, that would be the side slip at t naught plus delta t. And we're also going to do this with the, the yaw rate. 
So using the state space model up above, I want to predict, given steering, what these two quantities will be at some small point in the future. So the first part is you define like your baseline. So this is where I'm going to be in the future. This is where I am right now. And this is all that Euler forward says. It's really simple. If you add the time derivative of these quantities at this time, and you multiply it by this time difference, <clears throat> this is the most basic estimate of where you're going to be in the future. So where I am now, derivative multiplied with the time step, this is my prediction, all right? And using our state space model, I have an estimate for what this derivative is. So let's, we'll substitute that in in a second. So I take this, where I am right now, and then this derivative, using our model up above, I'm going to take this, because this is an approximation of my derivative right now. So I'm going to take my A matrix times these quantities right now, plus the B matrix times my steering input right now. So that's this. And then I, I multiply that by delta T. And then you can keep repeating this process and it'll keep updating your side slip angle and yaw rate, okay? So why don't we put this part in MATLAB right now? Let's just do that. And this is going to, an Euler forward um, thing is going to happen in a for loop. So I'm going to define a for loop right now. And I'm going to use this variable k to be my index. And we're going to go from 1 to n minus one, and we'll define what this n is in a second. But all you need to think of is that this, this variable k is changing. <clears throat> okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna define states so these states I'm gonna have those be beta my side slip angle and my yaw rate so it's gonna be um, a two by one vector at each time step so let's define our, our very first one. Because I said I want my very initial beta to be equal to zero. Well, let's just call it like a different variable. Initial side slip angle, initial yaw rate. So my very first states, before I go into the loop, I'll have it be beta naught and R naught. So this is my baseline. And then when I'm in the loop, so the first time I go in here, K is going to be equal to 1. So it's going to say my states at K plus 1, which is 
states two, so my second st set of states is going to be, so this is taking that same Euler formula. It's going to be my previous states plus the derivative of my states. How would we call it like D states or something for like the derivative? And we'll define what this is. So the derivative of my states, using my states-based model, it's gonna be the A matrix times my states plus the B matrix times whatever my steering input right now is. And we haven't even defined what this is yet, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and then this Euler forward line, I can't remember. I mean, I, I have to remember to multiply this times delta T. Okay, so this is like the skeleton of our Euler forward process here. Okay. So, okay, we have our initial states, blah, 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 blah. Let's define what I want my steering to be. Delta. I want it to be a sinusoidal pattern over some time. So omega would be the frequency, time is the time vector, but I have to define each of these things. So let's define the time first. Let's say we're going to do this over five seconds. So I'm going to make a time vector. It starts at zero. It goes in intervals of dt. Let's say it goes. Let's say it goes up to ten seconds. Let's do it in intervals of one hundredth of a second. Okay. So I needed to find this frequency. Let's say I'll define like a period of oscillation. So if I do one sinusoidal pattern. Let's say it takes um, three seconds to finish that pattern. And then the frequency would be two times pi divided by that period of oscillation. So if you think about what this steering is going to look like, it's going to be a sinusoid. It's going to take place over 10 seconds. And it's going to complete like three cycles over that 10 seconds. So you can kind of visualize what this is going to be. So now when I go into my for loop, it's going to be plugging in that steering angle at each time. And that's going to propagate my model forward. Okay. D states. And let's, let's define our first derivative of our states because we defined our initial states themselves, but let's define this. I guess I would take this same definition, but I'll plug in um, these first values. So actually this is gonna turn out to be zero because my initial states, I set those equal to zero. So I'm multiplying by zero and my initial steering well, a sign starts at zero when time equals zero. So this is just going to be zero as well. But if I changed up things, then, then this would adjust it. Okay. How about we try to run this first? And, um, and we'll plot the results. And so I'm going to get my side slip angle so after this loop completes my side slip angle is going to be the first element of my state vector and as this for loop goes on it's building the state vector like column by column oh finbar good point i have to define in so that's the number of times we go through this loop so what i want to do 
I'm going to define it up here. N is the length of our time vector. Because the length of our time vector tells me how many slices of time am I going to examine this simulation. Why do I go up to N minus 1? Because at 10 seconds, that'll be my nth slice because there's um, this line calculates how many slices of time I have. But because I have this K plus one here, if I went all the way to N instead of N minus one, this would go up to N plus one. And um, I spelled length wrong. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna get beta. Um, we're gonna get my yaw rate. And let's just, let's just, let's just plot this to see if this is working. We'll plot, let's just try our side slip over time. This line width command just makes the line a little thicker. Let's turn on a grid. Let's label our axes. It's gonna be beta. It'll be in radians. Uh, oh wait, that's not my horizontal axis. That'll be my vertical axis. My horizontal axis, I want to be time. Time in seconds. <sighs> okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna click run this code and I have to save it before I run it. Um, let's call this vehicle simulation. I mean, October 28th. Ooh. All right, people. We can see that our side slip is changing sinusoidally. Remember the steering input is a sinusoid and it's supposed to be like three cycles roughly over this time interval. So it's like one, two, three, yep. Okay, that's our side slip. And we can also do our, our yaw rate, but to save time, I won't plot that yet. Because, remember our goal here, we, we need information from this, from this bicycle model, but we want to predict the position and the heading of the car Let's go back to our notes real quick. All right. So, 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 so. Predicting position from beta and R, which we now have from our simulation. So we're going to make a drawing of our vehicle. And as you can see, that is a car. And this is the uh, longitudinal body axis. It's pointing out of the windshield. This is our lateral body axis. It's pointing to the driver's right-hand side. And to make this really clear, here's our windshield. And now it's very obvious that this is a car and not just an oblong shape. All right, let us assume that the heading angle of the car is measured relative to 
I'm gonna call this axis fx. It's gonna be like our fixed frame. And let's assume that it's just always pointed vertically. Even, and we know the body frame moves around with the car. So the purple axes are always gonna be shifting around. But let's assume that this fixed axis is always pointing this way. So the heading angle is this angle in here. And that's gonna tell us where our car is pointed. So let me tell you how we're going to predict our heading angle. The time derivative of the heading angle is defined as our yaw rate, which we, via our Euler forward method, we have that yaw rate. So what I can do is I can use an Euler forward method to predict my heading angle. So I'll say my heading angle, so it's, it's um, at some future time, is gonna be my heading angle right now, plus the time derivative of my heading angle right now, which is r times delta t. All right, so we're going to make another Euler forward loop and just for the derivative we're gonna plug in the result that we got from before makes sense okay now how do we get position all right so this one's this one's a little trickier but it's not it's not too tricky let's draw the velocity vector of the car I'm gonna say it's like pointing over here. And remember for this simulation, the velocity is always constant. Now we have another angle that describes the difference between the, uh, the nose of the car and the velocity vector. And that's the side slip angle. Maybe I'll do that one in red. So anyways, the angle between where the nose of the car is pointed and where the velocity is actually going, that's the definition of our side slip angle. So what I want to do is, um, well, I want to predict X and Y and these are going to be like our GPS coordinates. And you, you want to have this relative to our fixed frame. Which is in like blue, right? So I also want to use an Euler forward method for that. So, um, my X position sometime in the future. So X will be like, let's, let's say this is our fixed frame F X F Y. And when we do our simulation, we're going to start right here at like the origin of this coordinate system. And then as we start to do our sinusoidal steering, um, our velocity is initially going to be along this fx direction. And the distance that I move along that direction, we're going to call x. But I'll start like steering to the right, to the left, and so on. And so the horizontal dimension like relative to that origin at any time that's going to be y so x think of it as like i'm i'm moving like vertically up the page we're looking at this from a bird's eye view the y direction it's like the the direction to the right so how is this x going to change with time time that like vertical progression well it's going to be whatever x is right now 
plus the time derivative of x, which I'm going to say this is the velocity along the x direction, which, I mean, it's the, we've been using um, like the dot terminology for everything. So you could say this is also x dot. So it's going to be the velocity along the x direction at this time <clears throat> times delta t. Excuse me. And then we're going to have the y. Same kind of thing. You take my y position right now. You add the velocity along the y direction at this time. And you multiply it by delta t. Okay, so the question is, what the heck is the velocity along that direction? And what the double heck, what the HE double hockey sticks is the velocity along the y direction? And the way we get that is we're going to look at this picture right here. Now we know the velocity is, is constant. It's always going to be 40 miles per hour, but it's not going to be pointing directly in the x direction or directly in the y direction. It's kind of pointing a combination of both at each time. So how do I get the x component? So the vertical component of this, of velocity, so vx, this is going to be v cosine I'm going to run out of room here. Okay, maybe maybe I'll, I'll I'll write this down here. Vx is going to be v times cosine of my heading angle plus my side slip angle. So, the heading angle plus the side slip is this like combined angle in here. So think like, why is this a cosine? Imagine if the heading plus the side slip angle went to zero. Well, then if that was the case, if this angle was zero, the velocity would be purely pointed in the X direction. And we know the cosine of zero is one. And so the X velocity would be equal to V. Okay, so we have this formula. And VY is V times sine Psi plus beta at any time. So we're weaving a tangled web here, but it, don't get confused. With our first for loop, we predicted our side slip angle and our yaw rate. Using our yaw rate, we can predict the heading angle. Now, if we want to pr predict the velocity, I mean, if we want to predict the position of our car, the X, Y coordinates, we're also going to use this Euler forward method, but we're going to need the velocity along the X and Y direction. If we have the heading angle and if we have the side slip angle, then we can figure out what those velocities are. And then we can do this Euler forward method. All right, let's bring this together. In MATLAB. That's not MATLAB. Okay, so we're gonna kind of, you could do all of this in one for loop, but I'm, I'm kind of like partitioning this up. So predicting heading angle and x, y positions given beta and r. Let's make another for loop. Equals one to n minus one. Um, Let's write our Euler forward formula for our heading angle, psi. Psi k plus 1 is going to be whatever it is right now, plus the time derivative of it, which is my yaw rate, which I predicted before at each time step k. So I get that. 
And then my position, xk plus one is xk plus, um, well, let's get these velocities. So my velocity along the x direction at this time step is the velocity times the cosine of my heading angle plus my side slip angle. And then my velocity along the y direction. Similar formula, but it's just the sign. So now x position vxk times dt. Oh, let's just do this. And y position. Yk times dt. Um, but we need to define some of these initial variables. So um, let's say our initial heading is zero degrees. And that means that my car is pointed in the x direction, which for us, that'll just be It'll be like we're looking at it from a bird's eye view and it's pointing straight up on the page. Okay, so we have that. We have beta. We have R. I need to define the initial VX and VY. Well, heck, I can just copy this. Oh, wait. No, this is fine. This is fine. Because it'll define that in there anyways. That's fine. I don't need to define the first because when I first enter this loop, k is equal to one. So this will define the first right away. Okay, vx, beta, vy. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I know we're running out of time here. So I think we'll have to save animating this for Friday. And that'll look really, really cool. It's not hard to do, but let's plot the X and Y position that results from this. Assuming that our code works, I think it will. So we're gonna plot. Now when you plot in MATLAB, you give the index for the, must we define the first X and Y? Oh yes, 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 you're right, you're right. So X1, let's just say it starts at, at zero. Thank you, Finbar. So we have those. Okay. So Y will be our horizontal axis. X will be our vertical axis. And we're just gonna make a line here. And let's label our axes. So the horizontal axis, which is confusingly, you know, the X label. This will be uh, Y position in meters. And our Y label will be our X position in meters. And then here's the moment of truth. If your code will run. Oh my goodness. I did not expect that. I did not expect that, but I think it's okay. <laughs> okay, think think about what's happening here, right? Uh, we, so we start at the position zero, zero, which is down here at the bottom, and we're going with 40 miles per hour heading uh, in this like vertical direction, right? Imagine your code running. Couldn't be me. <laughs> um, okay. And then the our steering input, first it turns to the right. And then 
Um, so, so that's why we're cornering to the right here. Wait, you know what I should do? Uh, this this looks weird because we need to uh, access equal. If you do this, uh, let's let's do that. Oh, that looks better. This looks better. So I'm turning to the right, and then I turn back to the left, and then I'm turning right, and then I'm turning left. And the reason the car starts to go in a circle is because um, I'm turning right uh, or I'm changing the steering so slowly that the car actually has time to start moving in a in a circle before we go the other direction. So we can change this if we if we if we pump up the frequency here. Like instead of taking three seconds to go through a cycle, what if we took uh, one second? I don't know. I'm gonna run this code again. And this is very different. The car is now just wandering to the right <laughs> in this wiggly fashion. Dang, did six full loop-de-loops in 10 seconds? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. Um, this is our side slip angle as a function of time. When you get a chance, can I see initial variables? Yeah, let's, let's do, which ones do you want to see? We said the initial side slip was zero. Initial yaw rate is zero. Um, I think I think everything's right here. Try one point five for t. It looks better. Okay, let's let's try a uh, period of one point five. Oh, interesting. Very first ones like M and I Z. Okay. 1500 kilograms mass. Try 10. Oh, like slow it, sl slow it way down. Okay, let's slow this sucker down. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, you're welcome, Finbar. Um, okay, we're running over time a little bit, but this is the basic idea of predicting position. Uh, there, there's a couple of things I want to mention here, and some of you might be wondering, but when we originally got this simplified model, we made some assumptions. One of the assumptions was that the car was moving in a constant radius circle. Now, as you can look at, obviously see here from this simulation, I'm violating that assumption here. I'm assuming that the radius is changing. I'm assuming, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going straight and then I'm going into a corner, then I'm going in the opposite corner. And, um, so I'm sort of using this model in a scenario where it's not intended or it, it was never intended for that use, or maybe that's too extreme. So this is, you have to have a caveat here that this is not entirely accurate because it's violating the initial assumptions of the model. Now I have compared some simple trajectories to the full nonlinear bicycle model, which doesn't have those assumptions of a constant radius corner. And the, uh, 
I found that this simplified model has more extreme motions than what the um, the more realistic model has. So um, probably, I don't know, maybe we can compare to the full nonlinear model next time, but some of these motions, just remember, these motions will be a little exaggerated compared to a real life maneuver because we're violating some of the assumptions of this simplified model. So what we'll do beginning of next time is I want to show you how to make an animation because I think, uh, let's see if this one, yeah, we'll make something like this. So you'll be able to see like the tire steering and this will give you a better idea of the vehicle motions and this will this brings it all together that's that's where i wanted to get today but that was a little unrealistic um so friday we'll plan on finishing this so then you'll have your own code to generate different motions and you'll be able to get a better idea of what the car actually looks like as you do it so that's a fun code to have um but that'll wrap it up for today yeah this one's this one's fun will you give us the code from today to can continue with on Friday. Well, ideally, I don't like to give out these codes that we make in class because I want everybody to go through the exercise of making it themselves because there's like little errors that might come up. Like even as I was just doing this in class today, Finbar caught a couple errors, you know. So I think you'll miss out if I just give you the code. So I think what I'll do is I'll continue with this same code, but I'm not going to, to post the code that I generated today. So you can go back to this video. Oh, you're, you're, you have the same thing you wrote, but mine won't run at the D states part. Let's see. Oh, that thing like has to finish. Oh, you guys, wait, 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 wait. Wait, yours won't run here? What is this programmed in? This is in MATLAB. But you could do this in Python, which is free. Um, I think we should, I mean, honestly, I feel like we should be doing Python, you know? Because MATLAB, once you get out into the, it won't run at D-States, Oh, yours, wait, 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 what, what happened? Okay, what if I, is there something going on here? What if I clear all, I wonder if it's like preserving some variable. Am I gonna get an error? What's the size of my A matrix? I think A is uh, two by two. Wait, okay, we got it. What's, what's going on here? Do you guys see a difference between mine and yours? I mean, maybe it's like something here. I had a colon, not a semicolon when defining B. Do you guys have a semicolon here? Oh, okay. Wait, Chris, is yours still not working? You guys can always watch unless you're gonna make sure your code is correct. Yeah. yeah. Yours, yours works now? So for most of you, was it in this A matrix maybe? My limits are different. 
Oh, I was saying something about Python. No, so what I'm saying about Python, let me tell you a story, okay? When I, so I went to graduate school at UB, and as a student of UB, I had access to MATLAB. But then when I graduated, um, I didn't have access anymore, but I still was, um, trying to do some <laughs> like dynamic stuff because I was looking for jobs and stuff and, uh, I didn't have MATLAB anymore and MATLAB costs a lot. So I was like, what the heck do I do? This looks harder to organize in comparison to Python. Yeah, so Python, you can anything that you can do in MATLAB, you can do in Python, except Python is free. Can we use Python for homeworks and projects? Sure, of course. Um, so yeah, I at that point, I downloaded Python, I learned Python, and, and there's nice guides online that says, um, a lot of us are used to MATLAB. There's a guide that says like, okay, if you use this command in MATLAB, this is the other command you use in Python. Did I use any specific library that's good for this stuff? Uh, I would use NumPy. Let's go to the chat. NumPy is like a library you get. Could I scroll down to VX and VY? Um, and what was I? What was I looking at? Is Python better job opportunities for MATLAB, especially in automotive industries? My guess is that Python is a more attractive skill than MATLAB in almost all engineering industries, including automotive. Now, if you know Python, you're also going to know MATLAB. Like, I think it's very easy to come back to MATLAB, but it's a little bit harder to go into Python. So like, if you, if you learn how to use Python, I think that's gonna serve you very well and if your job has MATLAB as well, well then you'll you'll definitely be able to go back and use that as well. It won't be a problem for you. I'm assuming there's only one interpreter for MATLAB as well and there's lots of interpreters for Python. Yeah. Python has replaced Java as the introductory programming language for academic purposes. Yeah. Um, Phil says never used either, been in engineering for 14 years. Well, if you're actually doing vehicle dynamics, then you have to use this. Um, Lewis says this model would not be available for simulating drifting scenario, right? Lewis, that's a good point. So this model is assuming small slip angles. Small side slip angles. So it, this is not going to model drifting right now. Octave is an open source MATLAB alternative, by the way. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, Octave is a good one. Yeah, I think, I think we should be moving more towards open source um, toolboxes. All right, everybody. Oh, uh, missed if you answered, let's see, how could we submit Python homework since we have to submit PDFs? What you could do, I mean, you could just, you could just include your code and, and figures, you can just screenshot them.
All right. Middle of the week, Wednesday. Could I go back to the States? Sure, I'll go back there real quick. Your code's still not working? D states. See you, Jenna. Is it working for you now, Wanderer? Hey, have a good one, MCAT. See you Friday. It's not working at all. I'm using the same. What is the error message telling you? What what error messages are you getting? Uh, foreign wanderer and hash brown swag. Hey chimney stacks. See you Friday. Have a good one. Array indices must be positive integers or logical values. States one delta. I have index exceeds matrix dimensions. Are you guys going to um, n minus one? Let's see. And array indices must be positive integers or logical values. Error in line 40, D states one. Is, uh, is that delta a one or is that an I? Like here, is that? Did you put a one in there, Ford Wanderer? Unable to perform assignment because the size of the left side is one by one, the size of the right hand side is two by one. Do you have um? Do you have this colon? Wait, because the left hand side here is definitely two by one. Okay, so you have a one. That's what I've written. Okay. What about your A and B matrix, Hash Brown? Check this. Make sure you have a colon and colon here. Because what might be happening... Another thing you can do, I wonder, can I see your first figure again? Whoops, I just opened the wrong program. Like this one? Oh no. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, Hash brown, another thing that might help is throw a clear all, close all at the top of your code and try running it again. Because sometimes it might save a variable as a certain size. And until you reset it, it'll keep thinking it's that same size or something like that. So I would try this, throwing like a clear all at the top and try running it again sometimes. Sometimes that's a problem. Hmm. 
That works? Oh, nice. Good news. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it a day. Well, not, I'm not calling it a day. I'm calling it a class. Um, we'll finish this animation on Friday. That'll be fun. Keep chugging along here. Hey, you're welcome, Foreign Wanderer. Have a good one. Have a good one, Hash Brown. Peace. Thank you.